Okay, so here we're going to go over some more basic examples of logic and determining if a sentence is true or false. Here's our first question right here. We start off and we're told what is true. And we're told that it is true that Stacy has orange hair and that Chris has blonde hair. So using that, what is the truth of the following sentence? Well, it says, if Chris has blue hair, then Stacy has orange hair. So this is a conditional statement, a P, then Q. Then Q. Um, so here, we're told originally, well, Chris has blonde hair, and that could be our, our Q, and that's true here. Now we say that Chris has blue hair, so that's not true. So let's reverse this here. We're actually going to start off with Q, our second statement. We're starting off with not Q, so false, and then Stacy has orange hair, which is P, the original statement, and that's true. So we have a false, then a true. Well, if Chris has blue hair, then we don't know what that means in terms of implications. Um, if Chris has blue hair and then Stacy has orange hair, that could be true. If Chris has blue hair and Stacy has green hair, right? Another false statement that could also be true. So overall, we would say that this statement is true. And we say that because we don't know what the what the implications of this statement are, right? That's what the if-then is all about. Saying that we know something implies something else. But if you start with a false statement, we might not know what that means in terms of implications. Um, if we started with something that we knew was true, like let's say this Chris this statement says um, if Chris has orange has blonde hair, then Stacy has green hair. Well, that would make sense because we're starting off with something true, right? We know Chris has blonde hair, so if that happens, then Stacy would also have orange hair. But if it says she has green hair or something, you start with a true and end with a false. That's still that's a false statement. Here we're we're given an if and only if statement, so it's a biconditional which is only true when you either have two true statements or two false statements. And I go over that in previous videos, basically saying that these two things do imply each other. So if P leads to Q and Q leads to P, if they're both true, that's correct. But if P is false, then Q is false, and, and if Q is false and P is false, well, overall, that statement is still going to be true. And the idea is that one leads to the other, and if one does not, then, then they're both. Well, if they don't lead to each other, then it's still a true statement, right? I, I'm having a hard time explaining that with this example, but I, I really went into it in a, in a former video. I'm a little stumped right now on a good example. But anyway, here it says 7 is a prime number, if and only if a triangle has four sides. Well, 7 is a prime number, that's true, but a triangle does not have four sides. It has three sides, that's false. So this if and only if statement is overall a false statement. And I'm realizing now I don't really like this question because the key to an if and only if statement is that one statement depends on the other. Uh, and prime numbers here, 7 being a prime number, does not really depend on a triangle having three or four, four sides. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good biconditional statement. I'll have to come back on that one. Um, but, but really, the key to one of these statements is that they each depend on each other. Uh, anyway, so last we have all squares have five sides or all squares have four sides. So squares have four sides. So this is a false statement. But this is a disjunction where our second statement is true. So as long as one of them is true in an or statement, then overall this statement is also a true statement. I have to come back uh, in another video with, I think, a better explanation of biconditional examples. But if you want to see, I have one good example up in a, a previous video. Um, go check it out. Thanks.